the offensive line, and that's been one of the problems for the Giants, particularly the right side. Well, the right guard, Chris Godfrey, got the starting job back coming off a knee operation, doing a fine job, a little play action there. Holds the linebackers as Noga, the middle linebacker, for blitzes, Sims throws a deep end route, something the Giants think they can do today is throw those big, deep 20-yard ends. Third and nine, and Tony Galbraith in the backfield, and Phil McConkey, number 80, comes in as a third wide receiver and goes in motion. Sims with time, and off the fingertips of Adams, and downfield, depending on the play, was Mark Jackson, one of the replacement players who is starting at corner in place of Cedric Mack, and so it's fourth down. And the Giants will have to kick. Sean Landetta comes in to do that for New York. And by Sikahema, one of the best in the league, goes back for the Cardinals. So the Cardinal defense holds on the first series. Landetta with a great kick. Sikahema back to the 24. Trying to turn the corner and does. Into giant territory. Sikahama may go all the way. Touchdown, Cardinals. No penalty markers down, and the Cardinals excite whatever fans are here. 76 yards. He had a big kickoff return against Washington last week. Watch this. Landetta with an outstanding kick. Normally you would say in a situation like this that he outkicks his coverage, meaning he kicked it too far, but this was an excellent hang time. Just an outstanding setup by Sikahema. Coming up the middle, draws everyone inside, gets outside, and now the punter, Landetta, is the only one remaining to make the tackle. My, nice move there by Sikahema. He goes in, 76 yards. Al Del Greco, who was signed this week, former Green Bay Packer, adds the extra point. Gallery will kick the long one. Will kick the short ones and Sikahema will run both short and long as the Cardinals have taken a seven to nothing lead in the ball game. One of the real keys to punt returning is number one, you have to give the impression of where you're going. Sikahema comes up inside, shows everyone he's coming in the middle, draws the coverage there, and then with the great speed gets outside. Now he shows a really good running back ability to make those little moves, little inside move, little outside move, and then he's all the way for the touchdown. He made the Pro Bowl last year because of his return ability, and the Giants have really been struggling in that department this year. 76-yard touchdown on a punt return by Bai Sikaheva. The Cardinals lead 7-0, and Jim Gallery will be kicking again. That was the longest punt return of his career. Roussan and Ingram are back for the Giants. Roussan on the left. Short kick. And it's over to Ingram's side again on the nine. Ingram brings it back and is knocked out of bounds. And the Giants will start in better position than they did the last time. Tim McDonald making the stop. And the Giants and Bill Sims will... Try again from the 31. Number 46, Tim McDonald. Sims coming in, as you can see, 11 touchdowns, eight interceptions. He's thrown the ball well. Just one of the problems he's had this year, Dick. He just hasn't had his running game, and therefore more pressure is placed on him to carry the low throw in the football, something that he doesn't want to do. And you don't have a running game, you don't have the protection, and it all breaks down. Adams is the lone back. Gets the call on the handoff, and George Adams brings it out to the 35. Anthony Bell makes the tackle on George Adams. It used to be when Adams was in the backfield, the, the defensive teams would say, well, when he's in there, they're going to throw the football because he is an outstanding pass receiver coming out of the backfield. But what happens is Parcell says the guy is an equally good runner, and now with him in there, we'll run it, we'll throw him the football, we'll throw him off balance. Second down and seven at the 35. Morris, with his first carry of the ball game, gets to the 39-yard line, will be shy by nearly three yards on the play. Tackled by Bob Clasby and Leonard Smith. Joe Morris, who has struggled early in the year and playing a little better, but nothing like he did a year ago on the ground. And there's that score again. The Packers beat the Minnesota Vikings 16-10. New Orleans 
continues to roll in Miami could knock Philadelphia out of the playoffs. Third down and three for the Giants on their own 39. Sims in the shotgun. And Galbraith out of the backfield has a first down and the Giants are in Cardinal territory at the 46. Gregory Johnson makes the stop. Good for 15 yards. Galbraith had, Johnson had Galbraith man for man. They're trying to use their defensive backs to cover Galbraith out of the backfield thinking that they can do it with Johnson. But that time Galbraith made that little move and got inside. And if they see this every third down situation, we're going to see Sims throwing to Galbraith out of the backfield. Giants have a first down on the Cardinal 46. Three minutes gone by, first quarter. Cardinals lead 7-0. Carson, who's now in the game, in motion. Sims drills it, and that pass to Odessa Turner is caught. And another giant first down. The rookie from northwest Louisiana grabs an 18-yard catch, and Mark Jackson on the stop that time. You're looking at Odessa Turner. He was one of the three first receivers taken in the four first four rounds of the draft by the Giants and Parcells says about Turner he is better than Terry Jerry Rice of the 49ers the guy's got great athletic ability just give him another year that's a mouthful first and ten at the 28 yard line Adams back in looks like an inside blitz by the Cardinals and pass is incomplete intended for Lionel Manuel and Carl Carter covering for St. Louis Carter has gotten a lot of work his way. He's in his second year and uh, had his problems, and a giant is shaken up. It looks like Brad Benson, the beleaguered left tackle. Looking at Parcells, he has to be concerned. One of the things that he's had trouble this year is in his offensive line, especially on the right side with Carl Nelson being out and, with, of course, with Godford being injured and Damian Johnson have to take taking his spot at right guard and now Benson at left tackle. Hasn't had the kind of year he had last year when he was voted to the Pro Bowl, but it still played well, and the concern is, hey, they haven't been able to run the football. That's the big, you know, why? Why haven't they been able to run? And quite honestly, the answer lies in the fact that they, that Parcells doesn't believe his team has been emotionally involved in the running attack. Not that they don't have the skills, it just, hey, just hasn't been there. Well, Carl Nelson, when he contracted Hodgkin's disease, it's not a the kind of an injury that the rest of the team can just say, well, that's just a football injury. That was a psychological downer, and that kind of set the tone, perhaps along with Perry Williams' injury. The cornerback got hurt right before the opening game with the Bears, and those two combined really put the Giants in a physical and psychological hole early in the year. 11-16 to go in the first quarter. They're still working on Brad Benson. Cardinals with an electrifying 76-yard punt return by Vi Sikahema have taken a 7-0 lead in this ball game. And you can be sure that the Giants are going to be looking for offensive line help in the draft. Let's take a look at the wild card scramble. Keep in mind the Minnesota Vikings, the second wild card team right now with the Saints leading the way. Cardinals came in two games behind Minnesota, and so did Dallas and Philadelphia. But if the Cowboys or the Eagles were to lose, that would eliminate them for, from the playoffs because of tie-breaking situations. The Cardinals have a better conference record, or would if they end up tied with Minnesota. So they may have the real hope of all the contenders to catch the Vikings. Doug Reisenberg, a rookie from California, is going to replace Brad Benson. Second down and 10 at the 28 for the Giants. Sims, and nobody there. Billy Ard, the left guard, was downfield. And the pass not thrown to any receiver in particular. But you could see right. In the middle of your screen, linebackers coming right up inside. That's Noga coming from the inside. And then on the outside, you have Bell coming from one side. And then on the other side, Junior. Three men blitzing disrupts this screen pass. No one can get out because each of those guys had to block the blitzing linebackers. Three wide receivers and Galbraith in the lineup for the Giants. Third and ten. Pressure on Sims gets hit, completes the pass. Nonetheless, to Phil McConkey, and McConkey gets inside the five. 
A blistering hit on Sims, but he got it away, and Lonnie Young made the stop after a 23-yard gain and a big play by Phil Sims. You're going to see that Sims is going to drop back, and from the left of your screen, 45, Leonard Smith to strong safety, and E.J. Jr., 54. There comes Leonard Smith, 45, and E.J. Jr., 54. An outstanding job by Sims, recognizing the blitz, and then McConkie had to read the safety. He saw him disappear, cut his route off, and went to the inside and made the big catch. It fits reception of the year for McConkie. The Giants have a first and goal at the five-yard line. Trying to get back in this game. Joe Morris up to the goal line is not back. But his forward progress will bring him to about the one-yard line. There is McConkie being tended to on the sidelines by the Giants. They lost Stacy Robinson with a broken bone in his leg. And they're looking at those three rookies. Lonnie Young and Anthony Bell came up to meet Morris on that play. Under 10 minutes remaining in the first quarter. Second and goal at the one for the Giants. Brain knee for Brad Benson. He may come back. Here's Morris. Outside. In for the touchdown. And a penalty marker is down. And it is against the Giants holding. They're going to throw a flag on Zeke Moat, number 84, and they're going to call him for holding on this play. So the touchdown is called back, and our referee, Jerry Markbright, will mark it off. Morris has a tough time scoring. We're going to see 84, Zeke Moa right here, drop back and he'll pick up from the outside a safety that comes up and he'll drive him to the outside. Guard, Godford will pull out and lead on the block and you're going to see the right hand in the face, right there you can see the hand on the face mask centered right there, catch him for holding. It is second down and 11, and Sims looking at the new defensive alignment by the Cardinals. They put in three new players. Second and goal at the 11, Sims incomplete. The intended receiver was Lionel Manuel, and covering on the play both Carl Carter and the strong safety Leonard Smith. What happened with the route that time was Bavaro, the tight end, Dick. He went too deep with his route, and he took the strong safety out there with him, and there was no room for Sims that time to get the pass into the other receiver. McConkey back in the lineup. He caught a 23-yard pass to set the Giants up here, but now it is third and goal at the 11th. Tony Galbraith back in the game for New York. Sims up the middle. Touchdown, Giants. Mark Favaro, who had a great game, his best of the season with 133 yards on six carries. And Gene Stallings is upset as the Giants finally score, now trails seven to six, an 11-yard strike to Bavaro. Bavaro will be coming from the right of your screen. One of the defensive backs, Tim McDonald, 46, first-year guy, is the man that's responsible for covering B Bavaro man for man that time. Bavaro just beats him inside. Raul Allegre's kick is perfect and the Giants have come back to tie it up. Joe Morris had a touchdown nullified but Bavaro continues his late season hot streak. In fact if you project his yardage over 16 games he would have had a thousand yards this season. But Bavaro is there and that with that much time remaining in the first quarter the Giants have come back to tie the Cardinals 7-7 on a 10 play 69 yard drive. From your viewpoint, does it look like Sims can pass all day against what the Cardinals are doing defensively? The Cardinals have come out here in, the, in this first quarter and done something they wanted to do right off the bat. They felt like that they could blitz Sims with all three linebackers and by doing that disrupt their passing. But Phil Sims, being the veteran that he is, spots it, turns around and hits his receivers. Then when he gets down in the goal line, he gets his big tight end in there. He recognizes the rookie has Bavaro, calls a little play action pass and throws a touchdown pass. Allegre kicking off. Sikahema at the one yard line. Sikahema finds a hole and here he goes again. Sikahema gets to midfield. Another superb return by Mai Sikahema and Perry Williams outran him. But not before, a 48-yard 
kickoff return by Bicekahema. Guy's going to be worn out before the game's over. <laughs> Kicking to the left, only thing that's bad about this return, as I can tell, is that what's going to happen, the Giants are going to just kick away from this guy straight up the middle. He notices the, he notices the little alley, goes up inside and out to the outside, but hey, this guy's tired. He just runs 76 yards with a punt for a touchdown. Why didn't they kick away that time? Yeah. <laughs> Here is Stump Mitchell on first down and gets hit at the 46, a gain of about three as the Cardinals start in Giant territory. Cardinal offense and Neil Lomax, second-rated passer in the NFC as Stump Mitchell, Ron Wolfley, the fullback, J.T. Smith, the best receiver right now in the league, and Roy Green, Louis Sharp, Todd Pete, a rookie, Derek Kennard, Lance Smith, and Tootie Robbins up front, and Robert A. Wolf, the outstanding rookie tight end. Gain of two on the play, second down and eight for the Cardinals on the Giants, 46. action by Lomax fakes up inside to Wolfley and then Green coming in from behind him a little counter option to the outside and look at this inside the great speed and quickness of Green allows him to split the tackles and then it's a foot race down the sideline nice little bit of offense so far by the Cardinals Lomax on first down gets it to Mitchell Mitchell got away from Harry Carson and fights his way inside the tenant may have another first down for St. Louis Terry Kennard, the giant free safety, making the tackle. Ideally, if you want to throw against the Giants, if you can, you'd like to get a back out, a little five and six yard swing hook. And that what that does is gives Lomax enough time to set up quickly, turn around and fire the little pass and let the backs catch it and run with it. 8.02 to go in the first quarter, 7-7 seven, seven the score, but the Cardinals threaten second and one at the time. Here's Mitchell. He's got the first down, and like the pinball on a machine, gets battered around, and his forward progress should be the six-yard line when Kenny Hill makes the tackle. Stump Mitchell has not really had good games against the Giants. He has scored only one touchdown in his seven-year career, averaging a little more than three and a half yards per carry, but he's coming off his best game of the season, going over 100 yards against the Redskins. First time he's going over 100 this year. First and goal for the Cardinals at the seven. You give it to him, everyone is surprised. They think he's going to block. He blows right by everyone into the end zone. First touchdown of the year for Ron Wolfley, who made the Pro Bowl for his special teams play last year. Six-yard run. And Al Del Greco with Cliffs down holding. Plan for Gallery to kick the long one. Del Greco with the short kicks today. And the kick by Del Greco is good. And the Cardinals regain the lead. 14 to 7 with 7 minutes and 5 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Wookley lined up. There's the eye. Mitchell's deep. Everyone thinking Mitchell's going to get the football. As you can see, Carl Banks hot in pursuit after Stump Mitchell. And then all of a sudden, Lomax says, ho, oh, oh, surprise you, fellas. He gives it to Wolfley. He cuts back inside for a big touchdown for the Cardinals. Not only his first touchdown this year, but his first touchdown of his NFL career. And he went over and grabbed the ball and is going to keep it as a momentum. Big game for the Cardinals. And you can see right off the bat, the thing that they want to do is total confusion on behalf of their offense to the giant defense. Wolfley's not supposed to carry the football. He's supposed to block. Gallery will kick off for the Cardinals. That's the third time he's kicked off in this first quarter. Lee Rusan and Mark Ingram go back for the Giants. And another short 
Hard kick. And it's Ingram at the six. And Ingram stopped at the 23. And right now, penalty marker is down. We are going to send it to New York for an update shortly, but a penalty flag is down on the return. Penalty flag down. Tackle on the play was by Don Holmes. Jerry Markbright getting the information. Five yards, face mask, first down. Giants will start from the 28-yard line. Bill Sims, who was four of seven on that last scoring drive for 67 yards. from Nico Noga, who has stopped at the 32. And right now, for an NFL Today report, let's check in with Brent Musburger in New York. Brent? Dick, we've had a dramatic turnaround in RFK. Down 24 to 3, the Cowboys have rallied 17 unanswered points. A lot of time left in this game. Two minutes and 30 seconds. There's been a fight. We'll have that at halftime. Let's go back to Dick. All right, Brent. Well, you had a fight from an NBA game. You're going to have a fight at halftime, and the Cowboys going back. Second and six, and Joe Morris dives and is stopped at the 34-yard line by Carl Carter, who will bring out a third down and about four. So Joe Morris, he had 35 touchdowns in the two previous years. 85 and 86 has only one touchdown rushing this year and had one called back because of penalty before the Giants scored earlier. People say so much about running backs, they'll be the first to tell you. People just don't listen. Hey, you got to have blocking. You got to have a little crack from the run, and they can't do it by themselves. Third and three. Giants on their own 35. Sims. And it nearly intercepted by Mark Jackson on the pass intended for McConkey. And if Jackson had held on to it, he would have been home free. Moved by Mark Jackson, taken over for Cedric Mack at right corner. Mack has a sprained ankle. Jackson reads Sims all the way, and then he breaks on the ball before the receiver. She, right there, it comes underneath McConkie, and doggone near intercept the thing. That was supposed to be a weak point. The corners for the Cardinals today. Sean Landetta kicks by Sekahema. Calls for the fair catch at the last minute at the 25-yard line. A 40-yard kick, and Sikahema, who has a 76-yard punt return for a touchdown and a 48-yard kickoff return already in this ball game. And the Cardinals go on offense again. Packers over Minnesota to keep a lot of people alive. New Orleans leading Houston in the fourth quarter. That should do it for the Eagles. Buffalo over... The Indianapolis, that's a surprise, and look at the score there, 42-20, even larger than people thought. And as Brendan mentioned, the Dallas Cowboys have come back in their game against the Redskins. First and 10 Cardinals on their 25 with 5.33 remaining in the first quarter. They walk the tight end move. Stump Mitchell. And Carl Banks makes the stop just shy of the 30-yard line and will continue to update you on the games, many of which are just getting underway now. Cardinals, of course, relying on the pass with Lomax and Smith and Green more than they have been on the run, and they've lost their top rusher, Earl Farrell, who was sixth in the conference. He's out for the year. Second and six at the 29 for St. Louis. Here comes pressure on Lomax, and down he goes. So, Terry, when you talked about those 21 sacks in the last three games, make it 22, thanks to Carl Banks, who is the NFC's Defensive Player of the Week. Carl Banks, 58, right, coming right inside this time on Lomax, and also he got help from Mark Collins, 25, the right, the left corner. And as you see, he pops in right there, the pressure on Lomax. The blitz by Banks didn't surprise Lomax with the blitz by the corner Collins did. Loss of nine on the play will bring up third and 13 back to the St. Louis 22-yard line. Four wide receivers for Lomax. And not a 
good snap from the center. Lomax and a great catch by J.T. Smith. But he doesn't get much on the play, and he is stopped cold at the 24 by Greg Lasker, who's in on the nickel defense, and it'll be fourth down. So that play just about broke up from the very start. Well, the defensive backs do a fine job of covering, but the thing that's so confusing for the linemen of the Cardinals is where is where's Lawrence Taylor and where are Carl Banks? Both of them that time got down in three-point stance, and the, and the Giants played a five-man front, rushing them from the outside. Bill McConkey goes back. He's having a fine year as a kick returner, and Greg Horn, who replaced Greg Cater as the Cardinal punter, goes for the long count. High kick. McConkey at the 33. Nowhere to go, and down at the 37-yard line by Nico Noga. A 43-yard kick in the Giants though we'll have good field position, trailing the Cardinals 14 to seven. 322 to go, and Cardinals have been averaging about 30,000 here at Bush Stadium this season. Headlines today concerning moves to keep the Cardinals here. No comment by Bill Bidwell, although he did have something to say to us, which we'll tell you about in a little while. First down, Giants, and Adams gets the call and picks up a yard to the 39-yard line. Winding down to three minutes remaining in the first quarter. Freddie Joe Nunn and Leonard Smith on the play. The running game and how important it is is reflected in the Giants from last year to this. 140 yards. Last year, 94 this year, Bill Parcell says, hey, we play up in New York on the East Coast, and you have to be able to run the football in cold weather to win. He's right. Second and 10 at the 38, and a deep drop by Sims going for Manuel, and overthrows him, Carl Carter, covering on the play. And that'll bring up third down. Basically, the Giants, who have had leads in the fourth quarter of a lot of their games, have not been able to run the ball when they've been ahead, and that has really been... The dilemma for the Giants. When you practice running the football and you use more so effectively 1,500 yards rushing last year alone, and you get used to that, it takes you out of your rhythm. You can't do the things you wanted to do if you can't run the football, and your offense is built around balance, running and passing. Third and 10 for the Giants on their 38. Odessa Turner to the bottom of your screen. Sims, and there's Galbraith. And Goldberg dives to the 45, but he'll be three yards shy of a first down as Gregory Johnson, former Seattle Seahawk, combines to make the tackle, and it's fourth down, and Sean Landetta will come in and kick it away. Landetta, who pinned the Eagles inside their 20 continually last week, kicking the Sikahema. And this one just sails over Sikahema's head into the end zone for a touchback. So he can't return this one, and it's a 55-yard kick, and the Giants will bring it out on the 20-yard line. Penalty marker now down. Illegal receiver. Penalty down. Ineligible receiver, I should say. Downfield, meaning that the two outside guys, someone from the inside left too soon before the ball was kicked. Decline. It's Byron Hunt downfield. So Bill Parcells, who's really having a nightmarish season, going from a Super Bowl team to a club that has been an also ran. But you've said it perhaps best when he told the, the team that forget about the comfort. It's Your over. jobs are wide that's open right. now. It's over. And what that's going to do is going to shake a lot of the players that have been very marginal. Maybe they have the talent, but they haven't been playing up to their ability. First and ten Cardinals on their 20, leading 14 to 7. On the delay, Stump Mitchell is stopped cold by Eric Howard, the nose tackle. Howard, of course, is playing in place of Jim Bird, who underwent back surgery on Thursday for a herniated disc. So Howard getting the opportunity here, and he's kind of a versatile nose tackle. Well, they like him a lot. The thing they like most about him is that he 
He has that great attitude for a nose tackle, the quickness to rush the passer, four sacks this year. And they liken him, get this, to an offensive player, Mike Webster of the Steelers. Got the big arms, the big legs, and the bad attitude. You know about him. You bet. Second and 10 at the 20 yard line. A minute and a half remaining in the first quarter. Swing it out to Mitchell. Looking for room. And he stopped at the 25. Will bring up a third down and five for the Cardinals. And you mentioned Howard has four sacks this year. Two of them against St. Louis. That time Pepper Johnson and Carl Banks made the tackle on stump. By number 52, Pepper Johnson. Lomax guessing that time that he would have a zone with that little wide flare screen pulling the center that time Kennard outside to block but that time Lawrence Taylor came inside on the blitz and messed it up. Third down and four at the 26. Lasker is fine green. is Don Holmes. He was trying to beat Mark Collins on the right side, and incomplete will bring up fourth down, and the Cardinals will have to kick it away. Carl Banks, 58 going up the field. There's the block by Wolfley. That's why he's in there. Look at the nice block. Knocks Banks back. Lomax has time now to go deep downfield. If they continue to block like that, they're going to have a chance to go for the home run. Collins doing a fine job of covering. It's fourth down, and Greg Horn will kick it away, and Phil McConkey goes back for the Giants with 33 seconds to go in the first quarter. Giants nearly got a piece of it. Roussan was coming in, and the kick goes out of bounds, and they'll mark it just shy of midfield. So the pressure on Horn will give the Giants good field position again. That was only a 26-yard punt by Greg Horn. Horn... Lucky for him, he's trying to kick the football to the left side. Now, had he turned to the right and had to kick it to the right, which a lot of kickers do, they either go to the right or the left side. Had he chosen to go to the right, that punt would have been blocked. Lee Roussan stays in the lineup in the backfield along with Maurice, with Maurice Parker. Roussan may be the most complete back that the Giants have. Sims drills it to Bavaro and it's tipped incomplete. And it was Leonard Smith who was there to get a hand on the ball. Mark Bavaro, 89, on the end of the line of scrimmage, just releases outside, goes up the middle of the football field, and then bends back inside. Leonard Smith, the, the strong safety, 45. Notice how he's reading the quarterback, Sims, sees the ball in flight, then leaps up and tips it away. Good play by Smith. That ball was headed into the hands of Bavaro. Second and ten. Adams on the delay. George Adams fights his way into Cardinal territory, and that may be the last play of the first quarter. Anthony Bell and then Lonnie Young provided the hit. So the Giants on the 46-yard line of the Cardinals. And that will do it in the first quarter. The only cheering was from by Sikahema and what he had done. That is the end of the first quarter. The St. Louis Cardinals leading the New York Giants 14 to 7. And we want to welcome those who just witnessed the continuation of the great rivalry between the Dallas Cowboys and the Washington Redskins. For you fans who've been sticking with the Giants Cardinal game all along, the Redskins held off the Cowboys to win 24 to 20. As you know, the Redskins have already clinched the NFC Eastern Division and we'll be back to Bush Stadium in a moment. We start the second quarter here in St. Louis. Nick Stockton along with Terry Bradshaw and Brad Benson is back in and his left tackle post for the Giants. Giants have a third down and four. On the Cardinal 47, fake inside handoff, and Sims up the middle finds Bavaro for a first.
First down to the 39-yard line of St. Louis. Now, Lawrence Taylor, we have not mentioned his name. He's been in the game, has yet to make a tackle, so a quiet start for Taylor. They've only sent him one time on a blitz, and that's a little screen we saw on the last possession by the Cardinals. Talking to their coaching staff, they believe that Taylor can play the whole game. His leg is that much better. They're not sure, but they feel like he can play the whole game. The only problem is can't, they can't use him on the blitz. Too much stress on his leg, so they'll just use him sparingly there. And you know, it's painful for him to stay out of this game. He wants to pay the price and play. First and 10 for the Giants on the Cardinal 39. Sims with time, drills it, and it's incomplete. Intended for Lionel Manuel. Anthony Bell, the linebacker, was downfield covering. If you've just joined us, Two electrifying returns by Vi Sikahema have accounted for both Cardinal scores. Sikahema with a 76-yard punt return for a touchdown and then a 48-yard kickoff return set up the second Cardinal score. The Giants, with a nice drive, countered on Sims to Bavaro. But it's 14-7 St. Louis and second and 10 for the Giants. Sims doesn't like what he sees and calls a timeout. Sorry. Cardinals fake safety blitz with Leonard Smith, 45, coming up in the line. Sims saw that. Sims saw Leonard Smith come up at the very end. There he's circling. He's come up, he fakes it, then he'll drop back out. He draws the audible by Phil Sims, and then Sims says, oh, my gosh, I've done the wrong thing. Now they check out and go to a zone. And so the Cardinals force Sims and the Giants to call one of their three timeouts. Early here in the second quarter, the Giants at second and ten on the Cardinals 39. Sims goes up the middle, and he's got Bavaro close to a first down. Let's see where they spot it. He caught it at about the 30 or 29. Leonard Smith making the tackle. Bavaro 89, one of those smart tight ends, comes down inside, will read the safeties and the linebackers and sit down, and Sims and Bavaro have a read route. Notice he's running down the field, sees the linebackers, turns around, goes in front of Leonard Smith, the safety, and just sits it down. A little option read route while on the run between he and the quarterback. He's caught three passes so far, and the Giants have a first down on the St. Louis 29, trailing by a touchdown. And a hard hit. Joe Morris is met at the 30 and a loss on the play by Bob Clasby. And Clasby met Morris before. In their first meeting this year, he stripped Joe Morris of the ball, caused a fumble that set up the only St. Louis touchdown of the first meeting. They likened Bob Clasby to Butts, the defensive tackle for the Washington, Dave Butts, the tackle for the Washington Redskins. He's big, you can't move him out of there. He just sits there and takes up the whole side of the offensive line. Second and 10, they call it a no game. Sims going to Manuel at the sideline, and Manuel caught it inbounds at the 16. Mark Jackson was covering, but that's a 13-yard pickup and another giant first down. Giants were easy winners the first time these teams play. They beat the Cardinals 30-7. to In fact, Giants are looking for their sixth in a row over the Cardinals, and their margin of victory has been huge in recent years thing that if you beat me the first time at your place and you beat us bad when you come to play us hey I'm gonna get even I'm gonna do my best to get even with you that's what you should think that's absolutely first and ten Giants on the Cardinals 16 Sims down at the 26 David Galloway with the sack Galloway 65 coming off the injured reserve list right in the center of your screen 43 Lonnie Young he's he's disappearing because he's doubling out to the right side and Sims trying to find someone with single coverage doesn't have the time and finally Galloway gets in and makes the sack Galloway was sidelined since August with a fractured left arm he returned briefly in passing situations against the Redskins last week starting this week and has a sack loss of nine it's second and 19 for the Giants Wide open is Adams out of the backfield, and Adams gets to the 21-yard line. Gain of four. Tim McDonald and Lonnie Young on the play, but Terry, it's evident that the Giants are strictly going through the air and not running the ball, which has been their problem. 
when you haven't been running the football successful and you come into a contest like this, the first thing that a quarterback thinks is we're not going to be able to run it. Yes, we want to run it. Yes, we're going to try. But psychologically and emotionally, you don't feel like you can do it. And that's probably one of the problems. None of them feel that they can really run it. They're going to have to throw it. Third and 15 at the 21. Galbraith back in, free wide now. Pressure on Sims, and he's got Favaro the tight end, but he stopped well short of a first down. Fourth catch by Favaro, but Mark Jackson had shadowed him well, and Travis Curtis, the nickelback, also combined to make the tackle, and it's fourth down, and Raul Allegre will come in to attempt the field goal. So if the Giants... 29 plays thus far. Eight have been running plays. 29 passes. Here's Allegre with Rutledge holding. This will be a 29-yard attempt by Allegre, who has been solid the last three weeks. And this kick is blasted through the uprights. 10:57 showing in the first half, and the Giants coming back trailing 14 to 10. There's the dangerous Vi Sikahema standing and waiting for the Cardinals as Raul Allegre gets set to kick off for New York. Allegre's 29-yard field goal has brought the Giants to within four points of the Cardinals here early in this second quarter. End over end. And it's taken by Sikahema, and he brings it out to the 31-yard line. By the Gary Reasons making the tackle. So the Cardinals go on offense first and ten. Cardinals five and seven on the season. And their first game ever at St. Louis when they moved from Chicago in 1960 was against the New York Giants. They were beaten in that game and they had 26,000 fans and that may be close to what we have this afternoon in what many people think could be the last game ever played here in St. Louis. A look at the St. Louis Cardinal bench, and of course they've had to play with a half-empty stadium this year, not knowing where they're going to play next year. Cardinals with a first and 10 on the 31, penalty marker down, and the pass intended for Robert Awalt is incomplete, and it was Carl Banks covering. Flag is down, though. Penalty flag down. T. Smith illegal motion. We're having a slight problem with the official's microphone. Where will the Big Red be in 1988? And of course, a lot of people conjecture, but Baltimore, maybe if they do leave, and of course the people in St. Louis hope they don't, but or do they, <laughs> the way they come out, but Baltimore would build a, a stadium just for football. Jacksonville has an old stadium. Penalty, by the way, is declined. People have talked about Phoenix, but the Cardinals then would be tenants with Arizona State at Tempe at the stadium there, and Baltimore could be a candidate. One of the popular sports columnists, John Stedman from Baltimore, is here today. So if I were a player, I'd want to go with Warren. <laughs> Send me to Jacksonville, Florida. <laughs> you can go. Second down and 10 at the 31-yard line. Pitch to Stump Mitchell. Wolfley blocking in front. And Mitchell fighting his way. Just shy of the 40-yard line will miss a first down by two yards, but a good hard run by Stump Mitchell. And it was Pepper Johnson and Kenny Hill combining to make the tackle. Pepper Johnson strictly has not played his way off the team. He has replaced Gary Reasons at inside linebacker. He's in his second year at Ohio State, and he continues to hold his job. Marcel says he'll have to play his way off, and he has not. Third down and two for St. Louis. Mitchell, close to a first down. He had to get to the 41-yard line. Lawrence Taylor, first tackle of the game for Taylor, who has been bothered by the hamstring, and it is a cardinal first down. Kind of a strange blitz by Lawrence Taylor that time. He blitz from way off the line of scrimmage and when you're trying to stop a team in in the short yardage situation there you would probably want to be up a little tighter I would imagine so far off he got there a little bit late 
9.45 remaining in the first half. The Cardinals with a first down and the lead at 14 to 10 here in the second quarter. Lomax, oh, and his tight end Awald started a run before he caught the ball. Kenny Hill was closest to it. Awald's been a real surprise for the Cardinals, guys. He's caught 34 passes for four TDs, and of all the tight ends in the last six weeks, he ranks third in the National Football League in tight end receptions. Today, we've got a real battle. We've got Awald, and we've got Bavaro, two fine tight ends. He dropped that one. Awald's played only six games, a rookie out of San Diego State. Rookie of the year candidate, but Jay Novacek, the man he replaced, has been activated now. Second and ten for the Cardinals on their own 41-yard line. 9.36 to go. Penalty marker down. He may have encroachment. The pass to Awalt is caught from Lomax, but markers are down, and so is Awalt at the 46-yard line by Kenny Hill. Mark Bright trying to get a description of the penalty, but this is going to be against the Giants, and you can credit Lomax for voice inflection that time, going up, going hut one, hut two, went hut one, hut two, real loud, drew the Giants off sides. It was the right side. Offside. Eric Howard, the nose tackle had jumped, so it is still second down, second and five. Still saying you watch the ball, you watch the ball, you try to block out the quarterback. The Giants had problems last week against the Eagles and going off sides, not watching the ball, but watching the players and listening to the quarterback. At the Cardinal 46. Lomax with pressure. He completes his pass for the first down. And making the grab is J.T. Smith, who leads the NFL in receiving. He set a club record with 80 catches last year and has 72 so far, and it was Perry Williams who wrapped him up, but not before the Cardinals have a first down in Giant territory at the 46-yard line. Kenny Hill, strong safety for the Giants, coming up late with an outside safety blitz, and Lomax saw it beautifully, turned around and threw the little 12-yard hitch over there to J.T. Smith. Forgotten man in Kansas City made a big splash here in St. Louis. Hole off the left side by Stump Mitchell. And Mitchell picks up seven or eight yards, and meeting him was Kenny Hill. So Stump Mitchell getting underway. It was the top Cardinal ground gainer of the last two years. Second to Earl Farrell this time. When you play against a 3-4 defense, which is what the Giants run, there are two bubbles, and both of them are over the guards. Normally you would pull the guards, but that time the Cardinals elected to fire their guards out. Both that time, Pete, the left guard, and Sharp, the left tackle. Good job of blocking. Eight minutes to go in the first half. Now, Wolfley, the fullback, sets. Late handoff to Wolfley. He has the first down, but the Cardinals are fortunate that they didn't have a mishandle and a fumble on that play. Eric Howard and George Martin made the stop. Quarterback Lomax, when you pivot around to make a cross or a cross buck type action, where you turn around to the left and hand back to the right, sometimes the quarterback will spin in place and not come over that one step necessary to get the ball to the running back. But the Cardinals have the first down on the giant 35, first and 10. Wolfley scored a six yard touchdown. Sikahema with a big punt return for a score. Here's Awalt, and Awalt can't get away from Kenny Hill, and so far, Terry, the giant strong safety Kenny Hill has had a very busy first half. Simple little zone that time. Kenny Hill standing out there, and Awalt, notice he comes off, he looks up for the strong safety, find out how deep he is, breaks his little sideline route off, makes about a four-yard break, gets the ball from Lomax, then tries to get up and get the first down, but it's a little read pattern, and where the safety plays determines how deep he goes with his route. Hill has had a bruised left shoulder. It was in a sling as late as Wednesday of, the, of this week, and he's had a lot to do so far here. Second and three for the Cardinals on the Giants 28. Hits to Mitchell. Changes direction. And there's Kenny Hill who brings him down. Living by Stump Mitchell, he saw nothing off the left side, and Kenny Hill stuck with him, and down goes Mitchell at the 23-yard line.
58 Banks comes on a hot chase. He gets up inside, but he's going to end up missing Stump Mitchell. There he's in hot pursuit. Then Mitchell says, whoa, I'm going the wrong way. He stops and cuts back against the ring going by Banks. And then, of course, there's the strong safety, Kenny Hill. As he stayed in place, had he pursued, then probably Mitchell would have got the big first down. He has the first down at the 23-yard line. Got it anyway. 20 remaining in the first half. Cardinals leading by four on the mark. And Wolfley carries for a couple close to the 20-yard line and might have picked up as much as four yards on the play. With Lawrence Taylor playing his normal position, which is right outside linebacker and Banks at left outside linebacker, Lawrence Taylor is teamed up with Leonard Marshall, the right end. Most of the teams starting since the Cowboys played the Giants, the Cowboys ran at Taylor and Marshall away from Banks figuring they could neutralize the speed of Taylor because Banks wouldn't pursue, but we saw a while ago that Banks does pursue. Second down and seven at the 20. Cardinals 14 to 10. Lomax over the top to Ewald, touchdown! He beat Kenny Hill by a mile. Fifth touchdown. Receiving of the year by Neil Lomax. His 20th TD strike for the quarterback. Hey, Walt, the tight end will come off the football and go straight down the field. It's man coverage. As you can see, Kennard, the free safety, comes over, bluffs at Awalt, pulls off, and it messes up Kenny Hill as he lays to the outside. Awalt cut back to the inside for the touchdown. It's 20 to 10 St. Louis and Al Del Greco, who lost his job a couple of weeks ago in Green Bay. One of two kickers active today, place kickers for St. Louis, adds the conversion. And with 5.35 remaining in the first half, Ewald has given the Cardinals a 21 to 10 lead. The, the life of a quarterback is you have to have poise and courage to stand in under great pressure, make the big pass, you, find, you see it's a touchdown, you look up and you give a little smile and say, it's all worth it, fellas. There's the scoring drive by the Cardinals, capped by Lomax's 20th touchdown pass. Roussan and Ingram, and it's Roussan at the five-yard line, bringing it back for the Giants. Almost had his head taken off, and now gets ahead of steam. And gets into Cardinal territory, does Roussan with a tremendous return. Troy Johnson making the tackle, and a kick return of 49 yards. Could put the Giants in business, though they trail by a score of 21 to 10. Cardinals lead the Giants 21 to 10. Dick Stockton and Terry Bradshaw. It's been a game of long kick and punt returns, and the Giants have a first down at the St. Louis 47-yard line. Throwing on first down against pressure, and the pass intended for Odessa Turner incomplete. Roussan's 49-yard kickoff return was the longest of his career. Sikahem has had two big returns himself. Notice Nico Noga inside, outside will be another linebacker. Bell on the other side will be EJ Jr. All three blitzing for a seven-man rush on first down. And on uh, Phil Sims, notice Noga right up to the middle, puts pressure on Sims, turns around, recognizes it, just thrown behind his receiver. Second and ten. Sims looking for Manuel. And coming out is Leonard Smith, the strong safety who converged on the play and defensed Manuel perfectly. Manuel on Mark Jackson. This is the place where the Giants would like to attack a young man. Even the Cardinals say, we don't know what he can do. We have no idea. Manuel has that one step. But the director of the defense, Leonard Smith, strong safety, he's over there to make sure that the young guy has plenty of help from the strong safety. The director. The strong safeties for the Cardinals direct and they want their free safeties to hit. It'll bring up a third down after the 47. Mark Ingram, Mataki, and Turner are the three wide receivers. Sims, and diving is McConkey, and he made the catch short of a first down by a yard. Lonnie Young was there to make the stop, but the Giants did not get enough for first down yardage as McConkey is stopped at the 38-yard line of St. Louis. So now it's fourth down, and the Giants, who trail, 
21 to 10 have a fourth and one and Bill Parcells has made his decision and he will go for the yard. I think that's a wise decision. Sims and McConkey are the two people that have been most active in the giant passing attack because the Cardinals quite frankly think one man can cover McConkey. And they didn't make it. Joe Morris ganged up and the Cardinals defense has held. The Cardinal offense is already on the field. They knew it right away as Joe Morris hit a brick wall and the Cardinals hold and take over on down. The thing Parcells was talking about is you have to play with emotion. If you want to get the first downs, you get the first downs. You can get them. But if you don't, and this is what's happening, you can see the emotion side of this football game belongs with the Cardinals. Keep in mind, the Vikings lost to the Green Bay Packers, and the Cardinals know that if they wind up in a tie with Minnesota, they would make the playoffs because of a better conference record. That picture may say it all. <laughs> Look at two people there and the thoughts of a lot of sports fans in St. Louis. One of the guys told me before the game, hey, don't be too hard on our fans here. I said, fans are fans. You win, you pack this joint. If you don't win, it's like this. First down for the Cardinals after holding the Giants. They're on their 38-yard line. Lomax. And it's Awolf diving for a gain of a couple on the play to the 42, 43. And right now for an NFL Today report, let's check in again with Brent Musburger. Brent? Dick, let me follow up on your comment about the Cardinals giving chase to the Vikings. We got a second team giving chase right now, too. The Los Angeles Rams, and they are performing surgery on Scott Campbell and the Falcons. Here's Irvin's interception. Incidentally, he apparently has verbally agreed to a new contract. And the Rams right now are routing the Falcons 19-0, giving chase to Minnesota. Back to Dick. And Brent, I don't think any team would want to play the L.A. Rams right now the way they've been tearing through the league. And that's a notice to the 49ers who have them in a couple of weeks. Second and five for the Cardinals on the 43. Pitch to Mitchell. And Mitchell breaks a couple and gets a first down into Giant territory to the 45. Carl Banks makes the stop, but not before Stump Mitchell picks up 12 yards. Leonard Marshall, 70, one of the most frustrated players for the Giants. Talking about coming out, playing with great intensity. Notice the inside, he gets hooked. He gets inside, pushed inside, and then, of course, Stump Mitchell goes in behind him. Leonard Marshall. Sore shoulder has slowed him down, but played big against St. Louis. Mitchell on first down at the 45. Loses a yard or two on the play, and once again, Carl Banks lurks as you watch the time remaining in the first half. Loss of one on the play will bring up second down and 11 at the 41-yard line of New York. You have to be very careful in your play selection when you're playing the Giants because of their great outside line in their speed and with the blitzing capabilities they have this is the ideal situation that the Giants would like to have the Cardinals in second and 11 Lomax has hit his last four three of them to Awald and now a tight formation swing it out to Smith on a wide receiver screen might have been designed for more and picked up a couple to the 43 and Mark Collins was there to prevent a big gainer everyone coming up inside the Giants getting up inside, showing all-out blitz, and then Lomax having to say to himself, are these guys really going to do this, or are they not? He looks outside and says, I guess they are, throws it out to Smith. Well, there are a lot of players on the Giants who have kind of been lethargic this year, but Mark Collins is not one of them. In his second year, he has made a big jump over last season. Third down and eight for St. Louis on the Giants 43. of Don Holmes incomplete. Mark Collins defending that side. So it'll be fourth down and Greg Horn will come in to presumably punt for the Cardinals with two minutes and 11 seconds remaining in the first half. Key word in the game of football is intensity and you can see in Leonard Marshall number 70, look at this, the spin move, swing, push, gets underneath, Nash at this guy. Fighting for his job. Isn't that what Parcells said earlier in the week? I don't think he's fighting for his job, to be honest with you. He'll be around a while. I think so. Horn will kick and 
Michael McConkey is back for the Giants on fourth down and eight for St. Louis. Oh, and a penalty marker goes down, running into the kicker. Adrian White, Giant rookie, and the Cardinals will maintain possession on a first down. Adrian White, the second round pick from Florida, had run into Greg Horn. It's hard to say that he re ran into Greg Horn or whether or not he was blocked into him. Because that time, Clyde 36 came right up the middle. He was sidestepping people and he was bumping into everyone. Let's see. Straight up the middle, number 36, coming up right in the center of your screen, gets by, ducks his head, and unfortunately does run into the kicker horn. So that gives the Giants a life and more misery for Bill Parcells. Gary Reasons has replaced Pepper Johnson, an inside linebacker. First and ten Cardinals, and what a catch by A. Wolf inside the 15. Terry Kennard and Kenny Hill look for 24 yards, and that was a bullet and a superb grab. A. Wolf. Similar to the touchdown pass he caught earlier, straight down the middle of the field, coming into your picture on the left. Reasons turns him loose, and as soon as Reasons, 55, turns him loose, Neil Nomax gets the ball to AWOL. And our two-minute warning is here. That's the time remaining following the two-minute warning, and the Cardinals getting a second life when their kicker horn was run into by Adrian White, and the big 24-yard pass play to AWOL, and the Cardinals who have really improved their scoring inside the 20 in the last five games have a first and 10 on the giant 14. Wolfley, the fullback, he has scored a touchdown earlier in the game on a similar play and now gets close to the five yard line. Side of first down by a yard will bring up second down. Exact same play that Wolfley ran earlier for the touchdown. Just a little reverse by Lomax, hands it off to him. Nothing fancy about the blocking other than the fact that the offensive line of the Cardinals right now is controlling the defensive line of the Giants. Gene Stallings and most of his defeats in a couple of years here in St. Louis have been less than seven points. Second down and call it two. Giant had a move, there's a penalty marker down. Scott Mitchell gets inside the five and in for the touchdown. If it's against the Giants, it'll be Wolfley's second touchdown of the Outside, game. 58, defense, Giants, touchdown. Carl Banks was offside. Stump Mitchell scores Wolfley on the block. So both men in the backfield have scored for the Cardinals this afternoon. AWOL 80 from his left side comes across to the right, and he throws the lead block. Wolfley, 24, kicks out the strong safety hill. And then the good job of running this time by Mitchell. There comes 24, Wolfley. He kicks out hill, and then Stump Mitchell cuts back inside the Gennard. Well, Mitchell's kick is no good. Off to the left. So the lead is 27 to 10 in favor of the Cardinals. And they have exploded here in the second quarter. Cardinals leading 27 to 10, and Jim Gallery has been kicking all day for the Cardinals on kickoffs. Del Greco had missed the conversion, as it's 27 to 10 now on a low bouncing kick, heading over to Roussan at the 10 yard line. And Roussan is dropped at the 21. Special teams have put the Giants in a big hole in this game, and that's been the story. Two returns by Sikahema, one a punt return for a touchdown, the other a kickoff return that set up a touchdown. And then running into the Cardinal punter, which gave St. Louis a new life, and they converted for the touchdown. That's Al Del Greco, who came over from Green Bay and missed the extra point, and I guess he's still auditioning. Absolutely. First down, Giants with 107 remaining in the first half, trailing by 17. Up the middle, Bavaro gets a few extra yards after the catch and a first down to the 37. He picks up 17. That's what Bavaro gives you, four-yard completion, and then he picks up another 13 yards on his own. Second down, a 
again. Bavaro stopped short of a first down. The Giants with two timeouts left in the first half. Lonnie Young and Gregory Johnson making the stop. Now they start it again. Ball is at the Giants. 47 up the middle is Tony Galbraith with a rare running play for him. Normally the receiver picks up a first down to the Cardinals 39. And the Giants will stop the clock with their second time out of the first half. 21 seconds to go. Here's our story with 21 seconds left in the first half. The Cardinals rolling out to a 27-10 lead. The Giants now down to one timeout, and they have a first down at the Cardinal 39 after picking up their first rushing first down of the game. Sims will try to work the sidelines, try to make the completions, get the first down, save that one timeout for a field goal if it's necessary. Sims short. He was going for Lionel Manuel, and covering was Carl Carter. Stops the clock with 16 seconds. The Giants offense with Sims in there reminds me so much of the way the Steelers offense was, and it takes a little longer to throw the football because of the routes. The routes by the Giants, by their wide receivers, are 15 to 20 to 25 yards. It takes a little longer, but boy, when you make those completions, you get big chunks of yardage quick. Second down and 10. Sims with time, and it's knocked away. Penalty marker down at the line of scrimmage. Manuel, or Stephen Baker, the intended receiver, and Tim McDonald was defending. But there is a penalty marker at the line of scrimmage. It's against New York. Sims had the most pass attempts of the season last week, 34. He already has thrown 27 this afternoon, and we're still in the first half. Holding number 68, offense, second down. Damian Johnson, the right guard who has come in for Godfrey. There's Ron Earhart, the offensive coordinator next to Bill Parcells. You only have to look at the scoreboard to ask yourself why has Sims thrown so many passes. That, they're behind. The Eagles have absolutely kept the pressure on their offense the entire first half. Brett Nerve will have scores and highlights coming up at halftime. Second and 20 for the Giants back at midfield. Up the middle, Galbraith with four seconds, three, and three seconds to go, and another timeout, and the last timeout called by the Giants. But, Terry, it's true that they've had to throw since they've been behind, but it looked like that they were throwing the ball early in the ball game, even when they were down 7 nothing and tied 7-7. That was the thing I talk, that I was talking about. Yes, we want to try to run the football. Yes, we want to do this and we want to do that. The balance offense for Ron Earhart's giant offensive machine is balance. Let's run, let's throw it. They haven't been able to do that this year. For whatever reasons, I think it's mostly, you know, emotional. You got to want to block. You got to want to run. You got to do all those things and play with that emotion. And they just haven't demonstrated that, I don't think, in the first half. So consequently, what do you do? You throw the football and that's not all bad. Giants will try to get three, and it'll be a long one. It looks like a 53-yard attempt, and that would match Allegre's longest kick of the year with three seconds to go. A 53-yarder by Allegre will not carry. It is short and off to the right, and that'll do it for the first half. So the fans cheer as the St. Louis Cardinals get a standing ovation. And the fans hope the Cardinals win if this is indeed their last game here. And the Cardinals have dominated the Giants. And that is the end of the first half here in St. Louis with the score. The Cardinals 27, the Giants 10. On this Sunday, the quarterbacks move center stage. New England's Steve Grogan returns from the injury list and fires four touchdowns to rout the Jets. And Cleveland's Bernie Kosar throws four as the Browns route the Cincinnati Bengals. And one of the great masters of this art, Dan Marino, throws three more touchdown passes as the Dolphins beat the Philadelphia Eagles. And for those amazing New Orleans Saints, it was Bobby Abair with three more touchdown passes. And the Saints again come marching in, this time against Houston.
What are you going to do about the Buffalo Bills? Do you remember what you said oh, earlier? Oh, oh. They can't win. They can't win. <laughs> Here it is with two weeks to go, and they're leading. They have to bow to the old Greek, the Oracle. Oh, Greek. I'm not going to let you all forget it. You just kidded me about Buffalo like crazy. Well, I tell you something. With that Viking loss today, all of a sudden, the, the playoff race in the NFC has opened up. The Cardinals and the Rams now are alive again. All right, Irvin, Jimmy, let's take everybody to the scoreboard and get them up to date with standings and scores now. Here's the New England score, 42-20 over the Jets. Now Miami over Philadelphia. It was 28 to 10 there. And here is that Buffalo score. Forget about the 27 for Kelly. How about the three on the part of the Colts at home? That's tough defense, folks. Look at this turnout. Largest ever. More than 60,000 opening drive now. Jim Kelly becoming one of the best in the league. Hits Ronnie Harmon. It was 7-0. And the Bills offensive coordinator, he had to coach Hurt. Leg brace following an injury on the opening kickoff. Now watch this play here. Folks, it's a hot potato play. Huh? It's volleyball time. Ball lands in the hands of Ricky Porter. It's a three-yard gain. And then the defense, you want to see him in action? Watch this. Sean Salisbury fumbles on a hit by Bruce Smith, and Big Smith recovers in the end zone for a touchdown. They want it easily. And now the standings show Buffalo, Indianapolis, and Miami all at 7-6 ahead of that division. The upset that Irv Cross told you about right here. Packers 16, Vikings 10. Irv, show us some highlights from that game. Well, Green Bay played an outstanding ball game, but early in the game, Tommy Kramer is quarterbacking for the Vikings, and he hit Anthony Carter on a 40-yard touchdown. But late in the game, Kenneth Davis scores from seven yards out. And I'll tell you, this is a tough run because they had to have this one to stay alive. He just breaks over that left guard, goes in, and the Packers upset Minnesota 16-10. All right, so that's the situation of the NFC wild card. Now, meanwhile, over in the AFC Central, Cleveland 38 and Cincinnati 24. New Orleans beat back Houston 24 to 10. And so the AFC Central standings right now, pending the outcome of the Pittsburgh game, look like that. Cleveland again can be ahead if San Diego beats Pittsburgh this afternoon. Greek, I want to ask you a question. What happened to Minnesota? I'm shocked about this one. You know what? And I failed to remember it. Minnesota played the Bears in a very hard, tough game and lost it by just a few points. I'm sure that there was a tremendous letdown after that, Brent. All right. The NFL today will continue. We've got the Ralph Sampson trade coming your way right after these messages from your local stations. Okay, now the big story in basketball. In that big trade late last night, the Golden State Warriors acquired Ralph Sampson, and they'll play him at center, along with guard Steve Harris from the Houston Rockets in exchange for center Joe Barry Kale and guard Sleepy Floyd. Now, earlier on the NFL Today, I asked Sampson about all the criticism that for his natural ability, he does not play with enough fire in his belly. In the NBA, it's a very long season, and people out there may perceive me in different ways, but I know I got a lot of fire inside of me that... Uh, drive me to play the way I play. And when I move to a different position, I have to learn a different position. I have to be different from uh, anywhere else that I normally play. And I only play center. Playing forward, I had to adjust to uh, outside shooting instead of my back to the basket. Outside rebounding, trying to go around somebody. And it was a totally different game for me to play, but I adjusted to it, and I think I played it to my best. A lot of basketball people think that Sampson does belong back at center, which is what he played at Virginia. Now in the NFL, games in progress. The Rams routing the Falcons. What a great defense the Rams have suddenly put together. And like the Cardinals, they would move to within a game of the Vikings in the wild card chase if they hold on, and well, they should. Raiders in Kansas City. Raiders just had a touchdown called back by an instant replay review. Failed on fourth down. Chiefs lead. How about Bo Jackson? Three carries, one yard. He limped off the field with a sprained ankle, but he has played since then. Pittsburgh and San Diego. The story here is the weather, 30-degree wind chill factor in San Diego, cold as many of us can ever remember on a Sunday afternoon, five Charger fumbles. Detroit and Tampa Bay, and so far Testaverde cannot get the Bucks on the scoreboard with a touchdown, 10-3 Lions lead. Giants and Cardinals, the game you're watching, 27-10, and the Cardinals giving chase to Minnesota right now. All right, the Dallas-Washington game. Washington holds off the Cowboys, 24-20. I mentioned on an update there was a fight. Here's how it happened on the Cowboys' last touchdown. 
It was a thrown pass by White. Now, Olkowitz gets into a shoving match. He's the middle linebacker for the Redskins. And I want you to watch who jumps into the pile after the incident. Here comes number 11, Danny White. Irvin, Jimmy, I can never remember a quarterback doing that, Irv. <laughs> the only Dallas quarterback I can think of in the fight was when Roger Staubach decked Clint Longley in hold the locker it. room after a practice. Hold it. Hold it. That was another quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Gilmer and Blanda were the only two. Fortunately, folks, at least what we know right now, no one was seriously injured on that play. All right. Second half is coming up right now. Let's send you back to Dick Stockton. Dick? We're at halftime here.